honestly, my reaction was, holy C-R-A-P. This is my closet. If I told them it was for a closet, they would think I'm nuts. And people at the store are looking at me like I'm a crazy person. And then they were looking at me like they were just about to kick me out. Contractors already hate me. They already <laughs> think I'm nuts. Ladies, find yourself a man who's willing to go to the end of the earth to find you your dream chandelier. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am so excited to be finally filming this video and I have a special guest with me here today, as you can see. This is my husband, Vlad. It is his first time filming a YouTube video, aside from random travel vlogs on my channel. So please be kind to him in the comments and show him some love. The reason why I have him on my channel today and talking about my closet is because he was super, super hands-on with this entire project. As many of you know, we recently moved into our house, which we custom built from the ground up. We moved in here in October 2021 and we've been slowly kind of piecing everything together and making our dreams and visions come to reality and I finally feel like I'm at a place with my closet where I am very happy with how everything turned out from not only the design but to the layout and the way that everything is organized and displayed and I'm really excited to be sharing it with you today. So I'm going to be asking Vlad some questions about his design process and showing you my closet and letting you in into this dream of mine that has finally come to fruition. Okay, so can you tell the audience what was your inspiration for the design process of my closet? Whenever we've gone to luxury high-end stores, we've noticed that luxury stores have a design that is uh, totally different from what you see in high-end homes and residential homes. It, it feels like it's a work of art. It's a uh, totally different aesthetic. And uh, me and Nikki have always been talking about, wouldn't it be amazing if we can do something like that in our own house? And uh, this was always kind of Nikki's dream to have her own luxury boutique <laughs> as a closet. and. Uh, I kind of fell in love with the idea as well because it seemed like a design challenge. I've always been passionate about interior design. I've never really done it for a living, but I've always really appreciated it. And I do have some background in graphic design and I thought, hey, can this actually be done? And I wonder why, even if you see all these high-end homes on YouTube, and none of them have that aesthetic that you see in luxury high-end stores. They have a much more a minimal, cookie yeah, cookie cutter, simple look, and it's just, it's not the same. And we wanted to see if we can pull it off. And that was kind of the birth of the idea. Yeah, and I'm really lucky, truly, that he's so good with design and he has such a knack for interiors and all of these things. So he always has incredible ideas. So I was really, really lucky for that. And you even said yourself that my closet is like your favorite room in the entire house. Yeah. He's really, really proud of that work. So can you tell us what was your process like? Uh, so I started off with kind of creating a mood board. I compiled a huge list of pictures I found online of different luxury stores, took pictures in person of different stores, of different details that I liked. And then I looked at the room and I kind of sketched out a layout of what I wanted to be. And then I found a 3D artist that would take these details and my sketches and would create a photorealistic version of the closet. And this is something that was super important. So what you see... Yeah, render. So what you see in a lot of uh, residential homes, they just have simple, you know, 2D drawings or whatever. They don't really go to the extreme of the 3D renders, but a lot of the commercial luxury stores, that's what they do because a lot of those details, you need to see that photorealistic view of what it's going to look like so that the contractor knows what to do and the different contractors can work together. And that was uh, one of the most important parts, I would say, for designing this closet. And that really made the biggest difference in how it came out. Yeah, I think that's a really important tip because it really helps the contractors envision what you have in mind so there's less chances of miscommunication or things going wrong. So that was like probably the most important things that we did with this. And, and the thing that is uh, also very important is that this designer should not have anything to do with the contractor. So a lot of people, what they do is 
These uh, companies that do millwork for houses, they have their own in-house designers and I would recommend never to hire those designers because they just want to make things as easy to build as possible so they can make the most money on the project. They're looking to simplify the design, make it cookie cutter easy. And this is why you see a lot of the high-end homes, they have they all cookie, look the same. Yeah, because yeah. the companies that create these closets, it's not in their interest to you know go crazy and do all these different things because they're thinking, hey, where am I gonna source this stuff? Where am I gonna get this? Where am I gonna get this? Hey, this is gonna be my problem. I'm gonna figure out where to get these different things that they can't, for example, the clothing rods. They can't source clothing rods like that. And then the marble backing that I have in there, that's another thing that would just scare them off and they wouldn't be able to do it. This is why I have my own designer doing it so that I know it's going to be done exactly the way that I want. The in-house designers, they're just looking to make things super simple so they can make the most money on the project. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And you mentioned all of these details that you kind of researched and sourced yourself. What are some of the other high-end details that you think make my closet unique and stand out? I'd say the most important thing is definitely the lighting. If you go to any luxury high-end store, I mean, they go nuts on the lighting. There's up lighting, down lighting, side lighting. I mean, there's tons of lighting everywhere. And that's kind of what I was trying to do with my designer. We're like, okay, how much lighting can we put in here? that kind of throws light on the clothes from every possible angle to give it that luxury high-end look. And that was something that's quite different. And again, the contractor's like, what are you crazy? Like, this is an insane amount of lighting. Like, where am I gonna put the transformers to connect all this lighting? And then the other thing with the lighting is a lot of these LED strips for lighting that residential uh, houses use, they have these little dots which was, you know, it was really hard to source something that had that... Uh, More like continuous. Yeah, continuous light. So the key for that was to find an LED strip where the dots are so close together that they kind of merge into one continuous light. And it was actually super hard to find something like that and source it, but every little detail, if you start cutting corners, I mean, it totally changes the whole look. Yeah, like every time I walk into my closet and I turn on the lights and like every single section of my closet just gets illuminated, it looks like I'm walking into a boutique. It doesn't feel like I'm walking into my closet. It's very unreal. Like every time I walk into it, I have that same feeling like, wow, like is this actually my closet? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and the other thing is uh, I also wanted to do a marble backing. So this is something that we've seen from Montclair and their designer, uh, Jill and Bossier, you know, they're kind of famous for that and it gives it that amazing contrast. And it's also something that is very different from what you see in residential closets. I mean, I've never seen a marble backing in a closet. So then I was like, oh, we have to have that because that is going to give it right away that different look. So anytime we saw details that were very different from what you see in residential homes, we were drawn to that. Yeah, I think you just mentioned contrast. It reminded me that like one of the key elements that we realized that looks really, really good in interior design is contrasting. And one of the things that we were debating about was this unit in my closet, <laughs> the wardrobe with the doors. We were thinking of making it white or black. And in the end, we decided to go with black because of that contrast. And I'm so glad that we did that because it makes the space look so unique and really gives it that extra like pop, you know? And the contrast is actually a very common theme throughout our entire house. We have a lot of white and black contrasting. And I think that's one of the elements that makes our home look like a designer home. Yeah, no, I totally agree. Another thing that I notice a lot of luxury stores have is their rods for hanging clothes. They're custom made and they're totally different from anything you can buy from suppliers and we knew that I mean that's another small little detail but it would make a huge difference and I was looking everywhere for like super nice artistic I wanted square hanging rods for clothes and I couldn't find them anywhere every supplier had the same old thing they had the typical tubular hanging rods and so I'm like okay I got how do I do this am I gonna have to make a custom one and the problem with custom it's so difficult to source it from the right place with the metal works and have the right finish. And then I thought about it, I'm like, oh, I remember at RH, I saw these drapery hardware that they have. Why don't I just use drapery hardware for hanging clothes, right? I that mean, was a brilliant idea. I love how that turned out. It turned out really, really different yeah, so, and unique. So we ordered these RH drape rods for hanging drapes and we use them for clothing rods. But the only thing is that we had to keep in mind is when you put a lot of clothes on these rods, it's a lot heavier than drapes. And the problem was that the length that we bought 
it didn't come with those center supports. So I actually had to call RH and I was like, I got like the heaviest drapes ever. Like I need to get those center supports because when I was ordering it, it wasn't even an option. I couldn't get the center support because it kind of adds it to your cart automatically when you have a certain length and it wouldn't work for me. So I had to call them and explain to them that you know, these drapes are super heavy. It's gonna break the rod, I need them. So I was able to sort that out and get it done and really happy with how they turned out. And I feel like that's it. Really gives it that high end look that from a luxury store that we were looking for. I didn't know you did that. Yeah. <laughs> he always has like this way of hacking the system and figuring out ways to kind of yeah, cause if I told MacGyver them, and like if I was told, if I, if I told them it was for a closet, they would think I'm nuts. Yeah. Like, this is not, it's not made for hanging clothes. Yeah, no, it turned out really well. And yeah, it was a great idea. Another thing that I think really makes my closet stand out and look unique, I really have not seen anywhere in other like custom luxury homes are the onlays. Do yeah, you wanna talk about that? Yeah, that's another thing that we saw from Montclair that we liked. They're really famous for their onlays. The thing is, at first I wanted to just find ones online that I can order. And the problem with those is, A, they never really looked anywhere near as nice as the Montclair ones. And the other problem was that the size was never exactly right to where we needed to be because we needed to have them in the corners and it, none of the sizes they had would work. So what I uh, ended up doing is looking for a company that makes custom onlays. And it happens to be that there isn't really a market for custom onlays. This isn't something that people do. So there's literally one company in Canada that does this and they're called Art for Every Day. And I contacted them, I told them I'm looking for these uh, onlays and I sent them some pictures that I found online, but they were not really that high quality. So they came back to me with some designs and they never looked quite right. Like the proportions were wrong, the images I sent them weren't that high quality. So I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna just take my professional camera with a zoom lens, go to a Montclair store <laughs> and just take pictures of those onlays. So I did that, went to the mall, took those photos and people at the store were looking at me like I'm a crazy person. Like, they what didn't are you? try to kick you out or anything? No, they were like, <laughs> you know, I, at first I was pretending to take pictures of clothes. So I'm like, I'm just, you know, I need to ask my wife what she thinks about it. But then I was taking pictures of like the ceiling, the different things. And then they were looking at me like they were just about to kick me out. Thankfully, I was able to take the pictures really fast and get out of there. So I sent them the high resolution images and they literally did a one-to-one, -one. it was perfect. I mean, it was one of those things that until you copy it one for one, it's just not going to look the same. No matter what you do, there's a reason why those onlays look so amazing. And this is what we ended up doing and it turned out really nice. Yeah, another thing that uh, I really liked that I've seen in some high-end luxury stores is that every part where you're hanging the clothes or the shelving, it looks like it's kind of framed like a picture. And that is something that I wanted to have in the closet as well. And this is what we did with kind of mixing the modern aesthetic with a classical aesthetic where it is that nice molding all around where every part of the closet looks like it's framed like a, like a work of art picture. And that was something I think that uh, turned out really nice that I was happy with. Yeah, I agree. It helped merge our love for like traditional and like contemporary Parisian design very organically. And it's another thing that I think makes the closet look super unique and different. Yeah, no, I agree. During the design process, was there anything that surprised you? Um, yeah, one of the things that I did with the 3D designer was I needed a chandelier as a kind of a placeholder just so that <laughs> we would uh, see what it would look like with a light fixture. And I'm like, okay, I got to go find a chandelier online. It's like a free 3D model. So basically, you know, you can download these 3D models online and they have a whole database of free ones. So I was looking for the a decent looking free one. I'm like, okay, here's here's a... Just as like a stand-in, just so we can get like yeah, the so idea of the render shame. and what it would look like in the space. Yeah, exactly. So I ended up just, it wasn't something that was planned or anything. I included in the render. And as soon as Nikki saw the render, she's like, I like, want that I chandelier. I have to have this chandelier. I don't know where you found it, but we need to find it in real life. <laughs> and I need it in my closet. Yeah, and then I'm like, oh crap, now, now I gotta get on a mission <laughs> to find this chandelier. I had to go through so many stores, so many online catalogs to find that exact chandelier. But luckily, you know, we found it and I think it really makes it's the good. space. Like it, it literally looks almost one for one, like the render. Yeah. Ladies, find yourself a man who's willing to go to the end of the earth to find you your dream chandelier. <laughs> if you had to do the entire design process all over again, what would you do differently? One thing that 
I didn't do was the top part of the closet. I didn't create hidden cabinets there. I actually had that idea in mind from the very beginning to kind of have pop out hidden cabinets at the top. But that would have been very useful. <laughs> but the thing is, design was already so complicated, and I was thinking that hey, in our current house, we never really use those uh, top cabinets for anything. It's something that's kind of like dead space. And I'm like, okay, like the contractors already hate me, they already think I'm nuts. Like, what are you building? And now I'm gonna have these hidden uh, cabinets at the top that I'm never gonna use just so that I, you know, I don't waste any space and I'm super OCD about you know, making it perfect. And, uh, and the other thing is I didn't really know how they were gonna turn out because I've never done hidden cabinets before. So that was another thing, like am I gonna waste all this time trying to figure out how to do it and it's not even gonna turn out right? But you did do that hidden cabinet that's underneath my shelves. Yeah, I did, yeah, exactly. Bags. That's the only that's the only one. But I did it in another part of the house where I did a lot of hidden cabinets and it turned out really beautiful and amazing. And it's like one of those things that people don't know about it when they see it, but it makes yeah. you feel good that like you went that extra mile that even the inside that people don't see has that beauty and luxury to it and that design to it and the, the functionality as well. So that is something that I wish I did differently because I feel like that you know, it turned out so nicely in another part of the house. That's something I would do differently. And honestly, I probably would have used it <laughs> because the layout of my closet in this house is very different and I feel like I need the extra storage space. Yeah, I think you probably put some stuff there and forget about it for a few years. It's okay. If anything, if I run out of space, I'll just move my stuff into <laughs> your closet. Yeah, like my closet's like half empty. <laughs> exactly. You've got the space. So what was your reaction like when you first saw a closet in real life? when it was completed? Honestly, my reaction was, holy C-R-A-P. This is my closet. <laughs> it was so surreal to actually see it come to life because we've been talking about it for years and doing renders and like talking about all of like the different details like the onlays and the marble backdrop and like it was a really long labor of love and like to see all of that come to life it was just a very surreal moment very exciting too yeah no it was uh, i think once i saw your reaction i think it was all worth it yeah it's hands down my favorite room in the house <laughs> so what would you say is your favorite part of the closet my favorite part of the closet is i love the onlays the marble backdrop and also like the framed sections i think that's really what makes my closet stand out. Oh, the chandelier. So everything, pretty much. Pretty much everything. But that chandelier, like, it made that closet. Like, it's over the top, but like, in an elegant way, and it just, it's stunning. Like, it, it just makes me happy. What was your process like for decorating and uh, styling your closet? Because I think that really takes it to the next level as well. It's, you know, it's one thing to have yeah. a beautiful space. It's it's another thing to have the right styling of course. So. Yeah, I agree. Like, I didn't want to take away from the design. So for me, it was really important to style it in a way that was not only practical, where I could see what I have and just like pull it when I need it, but also make it like visually beautiful. Like when you walk into a luxury store, everything is spaced out beautifully so you can see each product, you can see all the details. And I also wanted to merge like functional decor with my actual pieces from my wardrobe. So I mixed in a lot of books in there, like fashion related books. I also got several displays to display some of my special pieces. I think that is also really important when it comes to design. You always want to make sure that you're creating levels and depth that's what makes a space look more interesting if everything is kind of just flat it doesn't really register the same way so for example one of the hacks that i found was i found these incredible like thick acrylic stands that are actually supposed to be for a computer that I used for displaying some of my sneakers and they turn out so cool. You love those acrylic stands. Yeah, I know. They, they, turn, they turn out really, really, really good. And then I have some shoes that I put on top of like a stack of books. I also have a really beautiful black and white picture that I put in a very minimalistic black frame. I also have those mannequin heads on display with a couple of my favorite hats. And I think when you mix things up like that, oh, the purse hangers, those turn out really cool too. Yeah. Yeah, so I think when you mix things up like that and add interest by creating depth and levels, it really makes the space look a lot more interesting. And I think one of the most important things is to have space 
in between. When things are too crammed, it becomes very distracting to the eye. It takes away from overall design. Of the that's what you see in luxury stores. Yeah. You know, they, they, one thing is, I mean, they have an insane amount of space between every piece, yeah. and it doesn't. You walk into people's closets in their house, and it's just like a bomb went off. Yeah. You can't even see anything. It's, it's so exactly. jam packed, and that also helps it look uh, sort of like yeah even when I was like hanging my clothes I made sure that I had like a, some space in between and I put them on acrylic hangers the clothes that's on display in my closet is on acrylic hangers and I think that also totally changed it because they're see-through usually in uh, closets and luxury homes people use usually wooden hangers right yeah and I feel like that adds more clutter to the space and it's kind of distracting takes away from the clothes and the acrylic hangers don't do that they don't take away from the design of the space they don't take away from the clothes that's hanging on them and i also feel like they look super sleek and chic that's one of my favorite like decor elements in my closet as well and yeah, they were super hard to find oh as my well. god they were so hard to find we're considering making custom ones yeah i got so lucky because i sourced the top hangers and the pant hangers from two completely different suppliers and it was really nervous when I got them in that they wouldn't match but they ended up being like a perfect one-for-one -one match for each other it looks like I got them from the same place yeah no, so that was really nervous. lucky so what, what would you say is one thing that you'd want to improve if you were doing it all over again <laughs> more space <laughs> <laughs> okay truth be told I think every girl who's into fashion would love a massive closet. My closet, I'm not, I'm not saying my closet is not huge. It's a really good size, but because this is my job to talk about fashion and always be like on top of like the new trends and all that stuff, it probably would have been helpful to have more space, but I do like the fact that it's not enormous because it really keeps me in check. I'm constantly clearing out my closet and looking at what I have and figuring out, you know, okay, is this something that I really love still? Is it something that I'm gonna wear in the near future? And if not, I usually get rid of it. And it just keeps me on top of my inventory and just forces me to keep things nice and clean and organized. But um, yeah, I have a rule. Like if I'm gonna buy a new handbag or if I'm gonna buy a new pair of shoes, I usually have like one in, one out rule. So if I buy something, I sell it because I have no more space. All right, you guys. So that wraps up this special video. I'm really, really happy that you came on here today and actually put contacts in for me today. That's true love. That's true love. He wore contacts for me today. That's very special. So thank you for being here. You did amazing. Thank you. And I'm sure, you know, my audience will agree and share some love with you in the comments. If you have any questions whatsoever, let me know in the comments below. I'll also try linking like the stuff that we talked about, the suppliers and the manufacturers the hangers and all of that stuff so check my description box for all of that i think that's it right yep. you want to add anything no <laughs> okay thank you guys so much for watching as always and i will see you in my next video <laughs>